Welcome to Exploring the Supernatural. I'm your host, John M. Strobin. And today we're tracking a phenomenon that has captivated humanity for centuries, ghost sightings. From flickering lights to full-bodied apparition stories of ghosts are ambiguous. But beyond the chilling ta tales, <clears throat> what does science have to say about the experiences? Can we explain them? Or are they truly glimpsing into another realm? Join me as we explore the fascinating science behind what people perceive as ghosts. Let's start with the most powerful tool and sometimes trickster. We process our own brains. Our perception isn't passive recording. It's an active construction. If you are in a house, rooms, rumored to be haunted, every creak or shadow takes on new ambiguous meaning. A branch scraping on the window becomes a ghostly tap. This is beautifully illustrated by a phenomenon known as pareidolia. Our tendency to see familiar patterns in ambiguous stimuli. A coat on a door can suddenly look like a looming figure this isn't to say that people are making things up. Their experience is very real to them. But the interpretation is profoundly shaped by psychological factors. Beyond our internal psychology, we very, the very environment that we are in creates what feels like a ghostly encounter. One of the most famous theories involves infrasound. Sound pitched below 20 hertz, which can't be heard. Our bodies can feel it, causing feelings of unease or anxiety. Then there's electromagnetic fields, or EMFs. Some ghost hunters use EMF meters, but strong fluctuations can also be caused by old wiring or appliances. And let's not forget the mundane drafts, causing doors to move, settling foundations, creating creeks. These ordinary occurrences can easily be misinterpreted as supernatural. Now let's dive, delve deeper into the human body and mind. One of the most compelling explanations is sleep paralysis. This is a temporary inability to move or speak as you're falling asleep or waking up. Hallucinations are common during this state. People often report a feeling of presence, seeing figures, or feeling pressure on their chest. Similarly, hypogogic and hypnopompic hallucinations occur when drifting into or out of sleep, creating vivid dreamlike experiences that can be interpreted as supernatural. Even carbon monoxide poisoning has been theorized to cause hallucinations in some cases. Finally, we can't ignore the deeply human element. When we lose a loved one, it's not uncommon to feel their presence or hear their voice. This is a natural part of the grieving process. There's also the power of suggestion. If one person believes a place is haunted, others might become more attuned to subtle stimuli, reinforcing the belief. Ghost tours are the perfect example of this. So what about the evidence that ghost hunters and believers present? Well, look at it from a scientific perspective. We have visual evidence like apparitions and orbs, auditory evidence like EVPs, unexplained voices captured on audio recordings, environmental evidence such as cold spots or EMF fluctuations, and of course, personal testimonies. While paranormal investigators view these as evidence, the scientific method requires a claim to be testable and repeatable. To date, none of the evidence has met these strict criteria. And I'm going to inject here that 
we're dealing with spirits that have their own personalities, their own agenda, and they may or may not want to cooperate with you. And if they don't want to cooperate, how in the world are you going to be able to do a repeatable experiment? Just uh, I'm throwing that out there. How might a paranormal investigator meet scientific criteria? They would have to transition from an observer to a scientist. This requires repeatability or replicability. Being able to repeat the phenomenon on demand, they would have to establish a detailed baseline for a location and control for all variables. They would need to use redundant instruments to verify the findings and eliminate human interpretation or failed instruments. Most importantly, their claims would have to be falsifiable, meaning that there has to be a way to prove them wrong. They would need to actively seek to disprove their own claims before concluding something is paranormal. So what's the takeaway? Does science definitely debunk all ghost sightings? Not necessarily. In the sense of proving that they can't exist, what it does, however, is offer incredibly compelling and often elegant explanations for the experiences that people interpret as ghostly. The desire to believe is deeply human, and that's okay. But understanding the science behind these phenomena allows us to appreciate the intricate workings of our own minds and of the world around us. Perhaps the greatest mystery isn't whether ghosts exist, but rather the incredible capacity of the human mind to create and perceive such vivid realities, or our own human spiritual consciousness to sense that there is more to life. And that's where I get off on it myself. I'm kind of leaning toward the reason we've had ghost stories and the reason we've had these feelings for centuries is because our consciousness is aware that there is something else involved in life. Pastor Chaplain Jarrell, would you offer up a prayer helping us find the answers to our questions and protect us and keep us safe for, for, till our next meeting? Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord God, that we could come together virtually, Lord. God, I ask as we continue on the rest of our week, Lord, that you guide us. God, protect us, Lord, and let us always be humbled and ready to receive your word. And God, that when you lead us, we follow. God, I ask and pray these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Jarrell. Always, brother. Any, any questions or discussions before I start to kind of wrap up a little more? Okay, well, one of the things I'm going to mention, if nobody has any comments, is that uh, I have sent out some emails to some companies that do infrasound to try to get some equipment so we can uh, uh, test for capturing infrasound and see if that will help us prove the existence of ghosts. And I've got, uh, uh, I purchased a new instrument which uh, detects radiation. That's another theory that's currently underway about ghost emitting radiation from the, the electronic energy that they're giving up. So uh, radiation might be another way for us to compare or uh, join things with a EMF meter so that we can detect the entities when they are present. This might add to us being able to find additional proof. I'm also going to be writing letters for to try to find any other types of equipment that we might could find a partner, uh, somebody to partner with that will help us with the investigations. So that's just an update and an aside for how we're trying to get on a more stable footing for doing investigations that scientifically prove the existence of ghosts. We want to be a leader in, in trying to prove this and make it acceptable to everybody in the scientific community. Okay. 
So anyway, that's all for this episode of Exploring the Supernatural. If you enjoyed this presentation, please like and subscribe to our channel. We're going to be exploring some new methods of coming up with scientific methods of investigating ghosts. Join us next time as we delve and dive into other fascinating mysteries. Until then, keep asking questions, keep observing, and keep an open yet critical mind. And thank you and good night.